Welcome to the video on skewness and kurtosis curve shapes. Let me get this up on the board here. Skewness and kurtosis curve shapes. So let's just kind of start this discussion by going back to what do we mean when we say the standard normal distribution? So standard normal has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And so if we want to sh show and demonstrate what this looks like, and I guess I'm just going to do it right here, draw my set of axes here. So he, this would be your raw scores on X and then y would give us, here's y, our frequency, and this is raw score here, and this curve is supposed to be symmetrical. Okay, it's my best job at making that symmetrical. It's not exactly symmetrical, but imagine in your minds if this was perfectly symmetrical, the tails on each side and, and kind of this um, the peaked portion in the middle, everything was exactly symmetrical. So here we're going to assume symmetrical. Okay, so what do we know about a normal curve then? Um, if I'm, I'm just going to take out a piece here and just, just for a second, I'm going to take this raw piece out just for a second here. What do we know? We know that it has a mean of zero and it is the midpoint, right? So again, the mean X bar, the median and the mode are all at the same point. They're all in a normal distribution. They're all the same spot on this standard normal curve. Okay, so then let's just talk about what this looks, what deviations look like from this standard normal curve relative to skewness and kurtosis. So let's start the first one. Let's let's look at uh, let's look at skewness. Now these are just shapes. We in another video we've already talked about how to calculate the math behind this as a deviation from uh, zero here. All right, so if this is the standard normal, then Again, what we want to do is kind of show what skewness looks like. So let me just show, let me put a couple axes in again. Here's an, well, we, we do our, yeah, we can do X as our raw scores. We do the frequency of X here on the Y. Maybe we'll call this, let me erase this here. Maybe we'll just go ahead and call this raw score again. Not to confuse. So it could be that you have shaped curves that look like something like this. It could be that you have a shaped curve X raw frequency, y, something that looks more like this, okay? So whereas the first one, the standard normal over here, this, this standard normal curve is symmetrical. The curve looks the same on either side of this dotted line. These other two are skewed curves. And we name the skewness by where the tail is pointing to. The long, the long kind of extended tail region. So going back over the standard curve, if you remember things to the right of the mean would have been positive values. So that's a positive one standard deviation, positive two standard deviations, so on and so forth here. Negative one standard deviation, negative two standard deviation, so on and so forth over here. So what's a positive standard deviation mean? It means that your raw score was higher than the mean score. Okay, so in this, 
and we'll call this example A right here, you're seeing lots of scores over here kind of on this more positive side. And you're seeing very few scores over here on the uh, negative side. So this would be the negative side over here. What, what is, where's the mean going to be here? Well, the mean is going to be slightly pulled um, towards the side that has the higher, um, it's going to be pulled slightly um, towards the, the side that has the lower scores, uh, the, the more extreme scores. So the, these, num this, uh, this, these negative values that are way out over here are going to try to pull the mean in this direction. So instead of being right down here through the middle like it would normally be, um, maybe we'll do this in red, you know, the mean would be offset a little bit. The mean would be kind of maybe right here. Okay, and so this this line in red would represent our x bar, and then the most peaked portion is still our mode because that's the highest frequency. So let's maybe put that in. Um, we'll do blue. So this value right here might represent or does represent the mode, and then the median would be in between these two values. Okay, so putting that aside, what does this mean? We call this uh, example A here, we call it negatively skewed. This is negatively, negatively skewed. Why is it negatively skewed? Because the tail region, this portion right here, is in the negative direction. So you're always naming this towards that negative direction. And it's called skewed negatively because it's pulling the mean in a negative direction away from the other measures of central tendency. Okay. Now, let's talk about this one over here. Same thing. So let's go back. Let's show where the mode is. The mode's still going to be this point uh, of highest frequency. And that's the mode. And then the mean is going to get pulled slightly in this direction by these extreme kind of x values that are right what are way out over here. And so that mean might be kind of more right here, which would give us the x bar. And we'll, since we have such few scores out here, but they're extreme, pulling our tail out in this direction. We're going to call example B here, we're going to call it positively skewed. Positively skewed. So we're always naming it by the tails, right? And so in this particular instance, if the tail's pointing in the positive direction, positively skewed, tail in the negative direction, negatively skewed. These would correspond, by the way, to um, gamma 1 values that are going to be negative here and gamma 1 values here that would be positive. Okay, so that's skewedness. Let's talk now about what the shapes of kurtosis might be. And so kurtosis is going to talk about, again, the peakedness uh, of how, how peaked, how, how narrow these might be. Um, the normal curve in its of itself here is called with respect to uh, kurtosis is called meso kurtic so a normal curve that has standard deviation 1 mean 0 is called meso kurtic all right if your gamma 2 value was negative or positive, that means that the shape has changed. And we've talked about that in a different uh, video. So let's get kurtosis up here. So kurtosis. Let's do a couple of small pictures here. All right, so here's my x. This is my raw. This is my y. This is my frequency. Okay, so what does something that's that deviates from mesocurtic, what is, what might it look like? Well, you might have one that kind of looks it's 
something like this, very peaked. And you might have another one, draw another set of axes here that might look something like this. Again, raw, Y, frequency, something more like that. Very broad, very flat, okay? <clears throat> so if you have this broad, flat kind of distribution, it's called platycurtic. Platy, that's a Y, platycurtic. And if you have this high peak um, type of shape distribution, this is called leptocurtic. And this leptocurtic is going to have a gamma 2 value that's going to be positive. And the platycurtic is going to have a gamma 2 value that's going to be negative, going back to the hand calculations. But interpretation wise, um, you got to think about what this means uh, for your distribution or your, or your sample of raw scores. Okay, Going back down here to the actual x-axis, remember this is a mean of zero, this is a, a standard deviation of plus one, plus two, plus three, you know, negative one, negative two, negative three. So this, these, these points here. So if I go to negative one, this negative one point right here corresponds to a certain frequency. This negative two point right here corresponds to a certain frequency. This negative three point corresponds to a certain frequency. What this means is, when you have broad flat distributions, we're getting scores that are coming way out here, very extreme scores. We're getting frequencies for them, right? That's what a broad flat type of distribution means. When I have this very narrow, right, narrow kind of distribution here, uh, what this means is, again, if I have 0, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, this point out here of plus 3 has very, very low frequencies, right? negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So this point right here, very low frequencies on the y-axis. So very um, small amount of extreme scores. So here you're seeing high numbers of extreme scores. Here you're seeing a low number of extreme scores. And so that's it. You have, um, you know, the normal curve, the standard normal curve, which is mesocurtic. You have, you know, skewness values that can be, you know, gamma one values that can be positive or negative, corresponding to, you know, positive and negative um, uh, shape distributions. Again, named by the tails. You have kurtosis, which is the amount of extreme scores in the distribution. If it's platycurtic, it means you had a gamma two that was negative and you're seeing extreme scores in the distribution. If it's leptocurtic, it's a positive gamma two and you're seeing um, uh, very few extreme scores. Um, everything's kind of bunching around the mean. There are other types of uh, you know distributions that you might see. These are, are certainly the most you know common. You might see something, and we haven't talked about this before. Um, you might see something that is by mo whoop, let's try this. Put that back in. You might see something that is bimodal. Um, I won't waste a, a lot of time with this, but if it was bimodal, you might see something that kind of goes up, comes down, goes up, comes down again. So you're getting two modes. One of the modes might be a little bit higher, so this one might be a little bit higher than this one. So you might call this, you know. You know, the primary mode, secondary mode, so on and so forth. Um, but essentially you're getting two points, a point here and a point here that are giving you two very high uh, uh, frequency counts. So you might have distributions that look like this. Um, 
that you could have uniform distributions, distributions that are the essentially the, the same value. So you might see something that looks like um, might, might look like this, where the distribution is completely rectangular and squared off. That means there was the same frequency count here. Again, this is frequency, the same frequency count for whatever level of score that you saw down here on the x-axis. Um, these last two aren't quite as important for the, the purposes of this particular course, uh, but you should be able to um, identify and recognize the, the, the shapes of uh, skewed distributions and um, kurtotic uh, distributions, whether it be lepto or platy. So that's it. That's it on uh, curved shapes relative to skewness and kurtosis. Hope you enjoyed the video.